Representing the business of boxing, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Mr. Marty! Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're far too kind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You, you have a great eye for talent. I mean, the fighters that you work with, even today, um, you are able to put them in a position so that they can you know, exercise their right as a fighter by showcasing their talent and still being able to make money, try to make you some money, and the business relationship is intact. You received a phone call some years ago to be able to help these fighters, and you mentioned bigger promoters where your contact list started expanding. You received a phone call from a great guy in this business, people that know me, People that are, are an audience of this channel, they hear me mention his name a lot. And I'm talking about the great Al Heyman. You received a phone call from him. Tell me how that happened. I mean, most people don't even know what Al Heyman even looks like, let alone being able to get him to call your phone. How was you able to do that, Mark? That's a fact. A lot of people think Al Heyman's Sam Watson. That's uh, correct. You know, but uh, so Al Heyman uh, first reached out to me when I was training a guy from Missouri. First time I ever spoke to Al, I don't know how he got my phone number, but I was training a guy named Rob Calloway from Missouri. Rob Calloway was a cruiserweight who uh, I took and got him moved up to number four in the world uh, by the uh, Ring Magazine. And so Rob, I used to bring, Rob was from St. Louis, Missouri. He would come to Reading, train with me for a little bit. We'd go down spar with Steve Cunningham. Uh, and so I took, you know, there again, Philly, Philly was my second home. You know, James Schuler's gym was, was my second home. So, uh, you know, Buster's like a brother to me. So here, uh, I would, I, I was training Rob Calloway and Rob didn't care. Rob would fight anybody. So Rob got the call to fight, to move up to heavyweight to fight Jamil McCline. Okay. Wow. Uh, mm. And he, he called me and that was our first experience. So I went out to St. Louis, Missouri to train him. Uh, St. Joe's, Missouri, I'm sorry. Went out to St. Joe's, Missouri to train him. And I remember uh, I was out there for like two weeks, and I got sick for almost a week on uh, my, my trip out there. But long story short, I put a plan together for him, trained him for that for that fight, and he went 10 rounds with Jamil McCline. And I thought the fight was very close. That it could win either way, okay? Okay. Uh, and it, and it showed me a lot about who Rob Calloway was. But during that camp, I'll never forget, I was going to a uh, – I was coming outside of Walmart getting, getting myself some food or something, some snacks and that. And I get a call from a number I didn't know, and the guy says, Hey, uh, uh, hey, Marshall Kaufman, this is uh, Al Heyman. Uh, and and uh, I just know – I know you're uh, working with Rob Calloway, this and that. I wish you luck. I think you can beat him, this and that. And I was like – how did this guy find out I'm working with Rob Calloway for one thing? How did he get my number for another, you know, and uh, just made an introduction. That's all it was, you know. And then uh, another time, uh, it was Travis's second pro fight. Travis was fighting Atlantic City on the undercard of Rob, uh, on the undercard of James Tony and Hasim Rockman. They were the main event. And uh, Al used to represent James Tony. Yep. So uh, I'm down there, and, and I knew Sam Watson. Uh, I didn't know him personally, but we, we hung out after I, when I had Charvis Sims. When I had Charvis Sims fighting, I met Sam Watson in L.A. And so here I saw Sam Watson. He's like, hey, Marshall, how's it going? This and that. Who are you here with? I said, my son just got done fighting, and they showed highlights of Travis's knockout on the uh, screen. And so Al was standing right next to Sam, and I didn't know who Al was. And uh, Sam says, hey, Al, you know who Marshall is? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know who Marshall is. He says, I know who Travis is, too. And uh, so we got to talking. And next thing you know, Al set up a meeting uh, to meet with about possibly signing Travis. Flew us, flew us out to L.A. one day, met in the hotel lobby for about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes, flew back to Philly. Like it was just it was the craziest thing, 
And uh, then we met another time in L.A. in back of a restaurant that was closed and just sat in the parking lot and talked for a little bit. But uh, that's the type of guy Al was. Al really didn't make public appearances like that. But uh, we uh, got to work together because he signed Travis as a manager. He was Travis's manager. And then in 2013, he reached out to me. Travis was already signed with him yet. He reached out to me about possibly doing shows with him. And uh, he said he had a big deal. It was going to be huge for Travis and all of his other fighters. And uh, if I was interested in working with him, and uh, that's when we started working together from a promotional, me being a promoter and doing shows with him and whatnot. And it got to the point where he would call me every day. I mean, and then during COVID, he was calling me like three times a day because I, I was one of the, I got COVID early and I remember sitting right in my living room here and, you know, being sick, not being able to go nowhere. And Al calling me three times a day, checking up on me. And that's all he would do. Call, check up on me, call back again, check up on me and same thing. So that's the relationship that we built over the years. Awesome, man. And and that relationship catapulted you to be in a position to help the fighters that you represent, you know, to get on uh, big shows like Showbox, so to speak, Correct. man, and Showtime Championship Boxing and undercards of pay-per-views. Um, how are you able to articulate that to your fighters? In other words, is when you say, hey, I got to, I got to, opportunity for you you're going to be on showbox or you're going to be on showtime or you're going to be on the pay-per-view arm of showtime or, or any other network for example when you were dealing with al Heyman in the preliminary stages of pbc he had to deal with bounce and and spike and fs1 and ESPN. And and a lot of people forget yep. about that yeah and i promoted all those shows i promoted bounce i promoted fs1 i promoted spike i promoted uh nbc uh, ESPN. He also had ESPN. Yep. We did we did ESPN right at the 2300. We had Benavides fighting Dennis Duglin at the 2300. Uh, I did that. I had Naeem Nelson on the undercard as well. So, uh, I mean, look, I was blessed because Al, Al gave me some, some huge opportunities. And, and the last opportunity I had with Al uh, was July 8th when I did the Boots Ennis card. So, uh, I just I, I've been fortunate enough to do work with Al, and uh, I felt very blessed from it. And and uh, look, I just I can't say enough. But some of the fighters I had, I actually had them signed with Al, like Atif Overton. Atif yes. was signed with Al. Uh, yes. Uh, Philadelphia. My son, yep. My son was signed with Al, and then a lot of other guys. Al just put on shows for me. Uh, Raiz Aleem, uh, because he was with me. Al never signed anything with him, but Al put him on all a lot of the shows. So uh, it was just it, it was a true blessing, you know, that Al created opportunities for me as well. So uh, I'm just, you know, I'll always be thankful for that. Yeah, and those opportunities he created for you, you create them for other fighters and give them an opportunity as well, man. That's a blessing. And so oh, when yeah. you're articulating that to the fighters. Hey, you're going to be on Showbox. I mean, what is their reaction when you're talking to them about basically, hey, you're going to be on TV? How does that? Well, how, how do they respond to that? But some fighters feel like they deserve it anyway, you know. Okay. Uh, guys like uh, like Atif. Atif just, you know, Atif, is, Atif feels like he should be on uh, championship boxing right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's, he's an entertainer, Marshall. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. And then some some are truly like in shock. Some are uh, very thankful. I got a young kid named Julian Gonzalez who fought on Showbox twice this year. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. So I mean, he's a uh, he's a quiet, humble kid, and he's very thankful for that opportunity. So uh, those are those are different uh, things that have come about with that. And even when I did the Showtime show, I have a, a young Dominican who was. Uh, an Olympian with the DR, he fought on that undercard of that uh, boot tennis card as well. So, you know, they're all very excited. It's, it's creating opportunities. And a lot of the opportunities that have come about is because of the relationships that have been built. And, yeah. and so people don't realize that, that it's, it starts with the relationships, you know. Yeah. And uh, some of these other promoters who are coming up that 
have never had that opportunity to put on TV shows, uh, they don't realize that it starts. It all starts with the relationships.